All right, everybody, we're here. Welcome to the PKF. Um, I'm your host, Preston. Uh, we have to do this sort of as a one take, uh, not to take that from Matt Farah, but really for the sheer reason that I have no idea what I'm doing. So here I am sat in an empty car park here in Northville, Michigan, and I just kind of want to do an introduction for the channel. Uh, again, my name is Preston, a little bit of background for me. Um, obviously, I'm an avid automotive enthusiast. Um, that's really the reason for this channel. Um, outside of that, I am in my last semester of law school, and I am also a small business owner and inventor. Um, really, I'm just here to kind of see where this goes. Um, as I said, you know, I don't really have any game plan or, you know, really long-term trajectory plan as to where I want this to go. But um, in the end, it's just about having fun. It's about talking about cars, um, getting other people involved, hopefully creating some positive dialogue. You know, Lord knows we all need that at this time. Um, you know, sat at home and doing nothing. So I figured, yeah, you know, why not start a YouTube channel? Nothing else to do. So here we are. I'm sat in my uh, 2020 uh, Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Just turn the camera around here. Um, you may have seen this on my good buddy Eddie X's channel. I know we did some content with the vehicle. Um, I guess I'll step out. We can just talk about the spec for a second. This will be sort of the intro video. And there will be more other cars featured on the channel as well. Um, again, 2020 uh, Jaguar F-Pace SVR, uh, Finition Ultra Blue Metallic. Um, very, very exciting vehicle for the price. Um, really is just sort of, especially if you live in cold environments like I do here in Michigan, it's really just sort of the overall package. It's sort of three cars put into one. You know, it's your utilitarian SUV, um, you know, pseudo off-roader. It has some capabilities, but you know, it's not going to be anything like a Range Rover, but it's also, you know, sort of combines the elements that you would see in a supercar, sort of like a, you know, the Lamborghini Urus and, you know, RSQ8 and sort of, you know, Cayenne and other vehicles in that class. So again, going over the spec, ultra blue metallic. Uh, this is a standard color offering, actually. This isn't an SVO paint. You know, Jaguar Land Rover do you offer SVO paints where you can get you know, sort of these crazy spectral blue colored vehicles, spectral green. You can really do, you know, paint to match, paint to sample anything. You know, if you wanted this thing to be golf orange, you name it, they can do it. Um, the wheels, wrapped in 22 inch black forged wheels. You see the red brake calipers. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of brake caliper, red brake calipers, but um, unfortunately that's the only option they have on this vehicle. And one of the things that sort of upsets me the most about this vehicle is that you can't actually option ceramic brakes like you can a lot of other vehicles in the class. You know, the Urus, they come standard, I believe. Um, RSQ8, you can get ceramic brakes. Porsche, you can get ceramic brakes. But you know, for something this large that weighs, you know, about 5,000 pounds, that option for the extra stopping power would be nice. So I guess that's sort of one of the negatives about this vehicle. Um, stepping around again, looking into the back, you know, decent amount of leg room. Uh, you know, not as, not as utilitarian and, you know, family oriented as something like a Range Rover, but, you know, I don't really think that you buy this necessarily to be a family vehicle. It's just sort of, you know, sort of an all rounder, do everything type of vehicle. Um, stepping around the back here, you have the quad exhaust tips here, you can see. Uh, these, are, these are dual mode, and we like this very much. They are actually real exhaust tips. You can see them in there. And the sound this vehicle makes is absolutely menacing. I mean, it is, in my view, the best sounding stock exhaust on the market. Um, sitting right next to its brother, you know, the F-Type SVR. You know, unfortunately for the 2021 year, 2022 year Jaguar have not announced an SVR variant which is upsetting I hope that they will do so you know I'm a big fan of um, Harry Metcalf and Harry's garage I know he took the F type R out of the new one and a lot of people say that you know the sound is muted it's not it doesn't give you that ferocious you know crackle and backfire and things that you would expect from the F type when it first came out it was really this sort of menacing just ridiculously sounding vehicle. I mean, you could hear the thing coming from a mile away. And, so, and unfortunately, you know, due to things like the EU, you know, new emissions laws and so on. And unfortunately, I think those things are starting to show up here as well. You know, cars just aren't sounding like they used to. 
and you know as we're going down sort of this electric you know train or bad wagon for for better or worse but um it's great to make do with a vehicle like this while you can you know while these are available um it's just an awesome car to be around it's a, it's a lot of fun um coming around the front this is just sort of stream of conscious as i said at the beginning i have no idea what i'm doing so you have to bear with me here first time really doing this sort of off the cuff um what i like about this vehicle as opposed to a lot of others in the segment these are all functional so you have your functional air vents for heating and cooling. Um, coming around to the grill, this is all pass through. None of this is fake, no fake vents here. Um, functional as well for the heat escape. Yeah, it's just a really uh, great menacing vehicle. And then and, and the, uh, the the P0 um, all season Verdes are pretty good, pretty good tire match as well. Performs very well. Uh, stepping in the inside, I'll just take a look at the um, sort of the driver's compartment here finished in sort of nice stitch leather here you can see this is soft touch here um, wrapped up toward the door handle you do have some real carbon fiber um, you know it kind of sounds a little plasticky it's a little bit um, you know lower quality than that that you would see in maybe a you know an SV Land Rover product for example but you know for I guess while I'm on that I should just say you know a couple complaints here sort of the inner door area this is hard plastic and these are just sort of the type of things that you're going to get at a vehicle in this price range. I think that this vehicle spec'd out to the, this is pretty much spec'd out to the max. Uh, I think it was just nudging at about 95,000. So, you know, perhaps you would be expecting a little bit better materials here in this area, but, um, you know, it makes up for this in performance, um, you know, in, in significant terms. Uh, stepping in here, sort of, you know, Aluminum pedals, which is great. This comes standard. I uh, got my all season floor mats here, not really doing a damn thing. Thing is absolutely filthy. Um, <clears throat> here you can see these are standard bucket seats, which is awesome with the SVR embossed logo here at the top, which I think is just really awesome to look at. It's a nice little feature. You know, when you step into the car, it reminds you where you're getting into. It's always going to be something special, which is great. Um, stepping in here. Aluminum paddle shifters, which is awesome. These are really nice to the touch. They're not the, you know, these cheap plastic -y ones. I wish they were column mounted, you know, like the Italians, the Alfa Romeo, uh, Stelvio Quadrifoglio, for example, has column mounted, which is nice if you're doing, you know, fast maneuvers and turns, you'd like to sort of have that on there, but you know, we can make do. SVR logo greets when you uh, open up the door and the electronics are on here on the dash as well. Again, you got this sort of uh, carbon fiber here continuing into the middle by the pist pistol shifter, which is a really cool feature. It feels really great in the hand. It's really snappy. Um, the ZF eight-speed gearbox is absolutely fantastic. Paired with this vehicle, you know, we're seeing these sort of all over, you know, various manufacturers' line lineups. Um, you know, I think it's the same unit that's in the Urus, for example. You don't get the dual clutch that you would have in something like a Huracan. It's, again, it's that eight-speed. Um, Audi makes use of it in their RS, RS Q8, RS6, and across, it's, it's also across the, you know, the entirety of the Land Rover spectrum. It's just a great transmission, have no problems with it. Um, very, very fast for being an automatic and, and not a dual clutch. Um, let's go ahead and fire it up and listen to it. Let's go ahead and prime the electronics here. Exhaust on. It's absurd. Let's go take a listen. Let's see if I can give you a little bit of the note here. I'm doing this by myself here, so I can't really leave this out by the back, but let's give it a go. Let's put it in dynamic as well. It's uh, absolutely absurd. It's pretty much antisocial is what I would call it. Um, yeah, it's uh, absolutely intoxicating and it never gets old to say the least. I'm um, just sort of continuing around the uh, interior here. You have your dual climate control. Again, just some of the things that you would see, you know, a little bit nicely 
a little bit more nicely finished in a Range Rover, for example. You probably have, you know, just a little bit better materials here. You can see it's hard plastic. Um, this is kind pseudo soft touch, but not really. I mean, it's 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 nicely you know appointed, but it it, it it could be better. But again, like I said, for what it lacks in some of the refinement on those, and it makes it makes up in dividends with the performance, the sound, and just the you know, sort of the visceral emotion it gives you when you're driving this vehicle around. Um, a couple more features I want to talk about. I don't want to drag this on, you know, too much. I'm sort of engaging in diary of the mouth here a little bit, and uh, we don't really want that, do we? Um, so again, here's your drive select modes. Uh, I have it in dynamic right now, which I just demonstrated with the exhaust. Dynamic, comfort. You can see it's changing on here, comfort. You have your eco mode. There's eco mode, never have that on. Um, ADSR, which is sort of your combo snow, ice, sand, etc. cetera. On the, on the 2021, the brand new facelift, which has come out. I've not driven that yet, but very much want to. Uh, there's actually separate modes for those. So you're gonna have your sand, sort of like your, you know, your Terra snow, ice modes like you would see in the Urus, for example, and I think they sort of caught on with the competitors, so they made those individual. And what that basically does is that, you know, uh, individually adjusts the throttle control, you know, steering, so yeah, I think it has hill descent too, which, you know, no one's really gonna use with this. Um, but it's nice to know that you have it, and they it's it's packed with a lot of features for, for, for what it is. And uh, really, just sort of, the overall take on this car is that, in my view, it is two or three cars packed into one. It really, it drives like a sports sedan. It does, you know, I get on stilts to a degree. You do feel it at times with the weight and so on when you're going through the corners really hard. You know, you're not necessarily going to keep up with a brand new M5 competition as you're sort of hooning this around, you know, corners, tracks and whatnot. But it really does hold its own. So um, thanks a lot for listening to this introduction i know i was sort of you know sort of droning on and couldn't really organize my thoughts per se really too well but i'm hoping to bring some really exciting stuff to the channel um i'm not doing this you know as a means of to get rich or anything or or necessarily um really i'm just here to sort of share my passion with cars with all you guys and gals out there so um, I hope this is received somewhat well. I'm going to do some more videos. I have an exciting car that's coming in about two or three weeks, which I'm going to take delivery of, and this is probably going to be going for it. So, and it is another Jaguar Land Rover product. Just can't get away from those. So, um, again, I'm Preston. Thank you for watching PKF and uh, signing out. Hope to see you next time. Thank you.